All right, here we go with our video for 7.1 ions. And to under really understand ions, the first thing we have to understand is valence electrons. And valence electrons are the electrons in the highest occupied energy level of an element's atoms. They're kind of like the electrons that are in the outer shell the highest energy levels shell. Uh, to figure out the number of valence electrons, you're going to count the electrons that are in the s orbitals plus the p orbitals. All right, so if you uh, get out your reference table and take a look at, for example, beryllium, right, atomic number four. All right, okay, think beryllium. Here, right, beryllium, and when we look at where it is on the reference table, it goes right to lithium, and then beryllium. So one, two means that there are two valence electrons. Another way to do it is if you look at the electron configuration on the periodic table. All right, so. There's the electron configuration, which is right here in the lower right-hand corner of the box. Okay. That last number is going to be the number of valence electrons, the number of electrons in the outer shell. So carbon has four valence electrons. As you look down a group, Elements within a group all have the same number of valence electrons. So if you look at carbon on the reference table, right, it's group 15. I'm sorry, group 14. Carbon's group 14. It has four valence electrons. Going down, silicon, four. Germanium, four. Tin, four. Lead, four. They all have four valence electrons. Valence electrons are the only electrons that are used in chemical bonds. The inner shell electrons aren't involved in chemical bonds, only the electrons in the outer shell, these valence electrons. Okay, so now we're going to learn about electron dot structures. And they're diagrams that show valence electrons as dots. For example, some down here. Hydrogen. Okay. Hydrogen has one valence electron, so the electron dot structure for hydrogen would look like so. Hydrogen with one dot. Helium. One, two. Two dots for two electrons. Now lithium. Lithium has a total of three electrons. However, lithium only has one valence electrons. So when we do the electron dot structure, we're only going to draw one electron. Okay. Carbon. We said it has four electrons. Now, when we draw the electrons for the electron dot structure, just like when we filled orbitals, we're going to draw the two S together. And then we have our two P electrons. So carbon has a total of four dots, two S together, put one of the P electrons on the top and one of the P on the side here. Okay. Uh, let's see, let's do another example. Oxygen. So oxygen. Okay. Here's the two S. You know, I'm going to put them on top here. It almost doesn't matter. Okay. Here's the two S. One of the P's, one of the P's, one of the P's. And then the fourth P. So we can see two pairs here, and then the other two P orbital electrons here for a total of one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. Elements within a group all have the same number of electron dots. Since they all have the same number of valence electrons, they all have the same number of electron dots. So beneath carbon is sulfur, right? And so if we count over, sulfur has two S's, and then 
one, two, three, four pigs per total. One, two, three, four, five, six, the same as oxygen. Another rule that I've been kind of alluding to from time to time in class is the octet rule. Now, when let's uh, think of a noble gas like neon. Okay, so neon. That's two S's, and then one, two, three, four, five, six P electrons for a total of eight valence electrons. When forming compounds, atoms tend to achieve the electron configuration of a noble gas. Like I've said, they all want to look like these noble gases, so they all want to get the same number of electrons as a noble gas. They want these eight valence electrons. So our metals tend to lose valence electrons, which leave a complete octet in the lowest principal energy level. Here's what that means. So sodium, you take Na, right? and it has one valence electron. If sodium gives up this valence electron to something, and it becomes an A plus, now it's positive because it's lost one electron, and it's going to look on the outside because this outside electron is gone. Now the sodium is going to look one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because it's the next inner level. It's going to look like neon. And that's what it's trying to do. Non-metals are going to tend to gain electrons or share electrons with another non-metal to achieve a complete octet. So, for example, chlorine. Chlorine by itself looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's one short. So chlorine wants to gain an electron and become chloride. It's chlorine minus. So it's a chloride ion. And now, by gaining it, it has eight in the outer shell. This, the chlorine's happy, and so is the sodium, which probably gave it the electron, is also happy. Right? Uh, the sharing of electrons, we're going to look at a little bit later when we get into other kinds of bonds. Right now, we're just dealing with ions and valence electrons. All right, as always, rewind it, take a look back if, uh, you need to, and we'll go over to class. I will see you in school.